right, big hour confirmed tonight later in the hour. Chris Johnston coming up here in a moment. Al's brother with another clue. He's got a pair of Leaf tickets somewhere in the city. you got to listen over the next few days to figure out exactly where Al's brother is. We'll get to that clue here momentarily. Best bets later in the hour. We've got trades in the NFL. We've got quarterback play and shuffling in the CFL. And we do have to be consistent, right? Generally, we try to call out, you know, heroic maneuvers like, you know, the guy who goes out and shoots free throws at midnight when everyone's left. Oh, yeah. I right? see this. I, knew, I see where you're going. Nathan Just... Rourke out there running sprints, you know, after everyone had left the facility, but it's outside and there was one camera on it. And, you yeah. know, he's in a bad place right now, Nathan Rourke. And he's a friend of the show, and I'm a big fan of Nathan Rourke. And I think yeah. he will figure it out and get his career going out there. But it's, it's a humbling moment because, you know, you go to the NFL – and then you probably think, okay, the CFL is behind me. And you come back to the CFL. You haven't played a lot of football in a while. Has And he's, he's been terrible, really. Quite frankly, he just hasn't played well. And the Lions are moving off him. And they're going back to Vernon Adams Jr. And now Nathan Rourke is getting paid a lot of money. And he's going to be holding the clipboard. He's not playing. I don't. I, I give a guy props. I'm sure he doesn't seem like the kind of guy... Noodles, you were given it to Kyle Lowry a couple of years ago. It was like wow. midnight. He was shooting. Free One o'clock in the morning. Like Could have got, gone to the gy- practice. You've got gyms everywhere. Yeah, but you gotta he go didn't have to do it out there. I don't think that this kid's like this. And there's all different kinds of phases of struggling where one is like, I got to watch a lot of video. The second is, I got to spend extra time in the gym. I got to get on the bike. Yeah. And then it's just like, you, you got to work in your mental game. And then it's just like, I, I just have to do something to tell my mind that I'm busting my ass and I de- deserve better results. And that might be one of the things that he decided to do. Yeah. He's Running in, sprints. He's in a bad spot, man. Yeah, he well, is. No other thing. way around it. You know, good for him to put the work in. I think the, the, the narrative was, and this is where, was you can put the work in without the fanfare, like without people watching. That was where I didn't like the Kyle Lowry thing. Didn't play well. The Raptors in a tough spot. Hey, I got to go out and, you know, put a show on for everybody. He's still putting the work in. I don't think it's probably different for Nathan Rourke. There's not a field. He's not running on his street. You it's got to be a mental have prob- game. He's, he's still the same guy. To. He dominated in the league in the past. Maybe yeah. he's just – he hasn't dealt with mentally the fact that it didn't work out and there was failure mm-hmm. involved in the NFL. And yep. he might be struggling with that. And sometimes as an athlete where you're the man and you get this and everything comes easy – and you deal with that kind of disappointment, it's tough to chew on, and maybe he just hasn't got – he's got to be like Goose and Maverick. When Maverick when Goose was gone, Maverick threw the chains in the ocean and said, let's move on here. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he needs that moment. You're right. You got – it's – it's. there's a psychological play, man. These yeah. are human beings. We're talking about it like we talked about with the Oilers. The Oilers look like they are heartbroken still. They just look like they don't want to play in the regular season. And, you know, Nathan Rourke, the the NFL dream, it may not be dead forever, but the only way it's going to come back alive is if you dominate in the CFL. Yeah, go be – and he's done it before. Of course he's done it. Now, it's a small sample size, right? He didn't – like, he didn't play for 10 years and then leave. And I think this is the right move for BC, but getting over those hurdles, man, they're they're tough to do. And you never know what's going to come your way. And – You know, Chris Johnston will join us here in a moment. We were joking earlier about, you know, Austin Matthews and the captaincy. And I don't think the reason he hasn't scored through three games is because the captaincy is weighing him down. No. But it is different. Like, there are athletes that just never felt comfortable being the captain or didn't want to be the captain. And I get the impression he wants to. I think he'll be fine with it. I think he'll, he'll, you know, he'll bring it to life. And I assume he'll be a captain here for a long, long time. But it is something that is tangibly different that he's got to deal with now. And I'm curious to see what well possibly changes, if anything at all, now that he's the captain of the team. The only thing that's different is, for example, in these last couple of games. Now, I haven't paid attention to it. You guys could probably speak to it more because I haven't watched a lot of post-game scrums or anything. But the Leafs won the other night. Was he front and center? even though he didn't score or whatever, or was it Mitch Marner? Like, you know, my point being is sometimes, and Roberto Luongo (laughs) told me this, there were times where, you know, he either didn't play or he didn't play well or whatever, but he had to go out and talk because he was the captain of the team. So sometimes, you know, Austin Matthews wasn't front and center the other night as far as point production, 
Was he the guy interviewed after the game? Probably they... should have been. Will- I mean, I'm sure he spoke, but it, I think if you're saying is there one guy that should speak after that game, I would think it was probably Nylander. Yeah. Um, you know, who scored twice. Marner had a great goal that closed the game out effectively. Yeah. Um, but I, I, it's a good question, and CJ's around the team quite often. Here he is, our, our yeah. TSN Hockey Insider, Chris Johnston. Um, on the topic of Austin Matthews now as the captain, have you sensed – him changing in any capacity is it i don't want to say weighing him down but is he is he noticeably you know different or having a different approach how, how would you describe him as the captain to comp- compared to you know previous years when he wasn't you know i haven't seen anything i would call a change you know i think austin understands he might be at times a little more front and center although when you are as good as he's been and up for major league awards he's obviously been pretty front and center from a a media and, and attention standpoint, you know, really since he stepped into the league. And so, you know, I, I think that, that it's, it's been a natural fit for him. I, I don't sense that, that he's complicating it or, or doing anything differently. And certainly in his, his interviews, he's, he's kind of been the same old guy, at least at the times I've been around there. So, you know, I don't, I don't think that it's, it's changed too much at this point. Now, look, when we get to various, segment of the season maybe where there's there's some some more swirling around the team we get in the playoffs i mean we'll, we'll, we'll probably learn a little bit more then but you know in these early stages of the year where lots you know let's face it has gone right for leaf so far they've had a nice start to the, the season there's not too much controversy in the air i think he's he's just kind of in status quo yeah as it should be um in, in terms of his role in the penalty kill this to me is substantial like he's he's been in the league for eight years he never killed penalties they were going to give it a shot last year. They tried it in camp. Keith got off it quickly. Barube seems committed to it. He looks comfortable. He looks good. And I think it's really important and effective that he does play that role and the messaging that it can send. Um, what do you make of his penalty killing you know, role so far? And, and do you expect this to stick the way that it has through three games? You know, it does look like it's going to stick because I, you know, I look at some of those those penalties and and he starts out, you know, him and Marner as the first two forwards. I mean, you know, for most of the last couple of years, that would be David Camp and someone else, you know, basically automatically going out to to start penalty killing shift. And and you know, at this point, it's not just you know the odd, you know, where, you know the penalties winding down. They throw him out for the last shift and he gets some five on five time. It, it looks like there's real commitment to doing it obviously they've you know in the very very early stages it's, it's gone pretty well there hasn't been anything that, that makes you think the coach is going to look at and go oh, maybe this isn't working we're going to have to alter our approach here and so yeah this this actually ranks as a bit of a surprise for me i mean for one you know matthew just plays so much typically as is you know if anything you're, you're probably looking for ways to scale back his ice time and you know with Berube being a bit more of a coach who likes to roll four lines of five on five this might be some way to, to augment that that you know you might see his five on five time drop uh, throughout this year as, as other of the top players, you know, may just because of the way that the coach deploys the lineup, but you know, he's going to pick up those minutes here on the penalty kill. And obviously we'll, we'll keep those power plays on us because uh, with him and Marner, if there's a, a giveaway or a block shot, there's going to be opportunities for the Leafs to have shorthanded goals. CJ, if, if you could break down Tanev through three games, would like, would that be what tree and Tanev himself would have wanted where it's just highly effective it's quiet. It's quiet in his own zone, and there's not a lot of fanfare, and we move on, and there's not much talked about it. Yeah, I mean, I think it's this guy to a T, right? I mean, unless you're, you know, watching the game with the sophistication of someone like yourself, Bo, or whatever, I, I think most people just aren't barely noticing him, and that's that's a positive. He just makes, you know, quick passes out of the, the, the defensive zone to get the puck going in the right direction. Obviously, we know about his pension for eating pucks and, and doing the, the, some of the things in defensive end that aren't always glamorous, but, but lead to winning hockey. And, you know, I think it's been a really nice start for both Tanev and, and Oliver Ekman Larson, you know, OEL's, uh, you know, got some different attributes to his game. You're seeing him a little bit more on the offensive side, generating shots and goal and things like that. But, you know, for, for off season additions, I think these guys have put a nice foot forward to start, which is, you know, which is positive. Remember last year, some of the, the Leafs newcomers had, had a tough start to the year. Ryan Reeves had a difficult time in the first month. You know, obviously John Klingberg was battling injury, but you, know, you get off to a tough start. Sometimes it's, it's difficult to shake the reputation that comes with, or the, the idea that you're not living up to something. Whereas I think Tanev and, and Ekman Larson and also Stolarz in net, they, they've all you know had a nice uh, early going here as Leafs, and and you know that's something they can build on 
as they get settled into their new home. That's where I was going to go. Uh, you mentioned the goaltending depth and, you know, Stolars and, and the monster there. But where are you at with Joseph Wall? And, you know, I, is it a, just a case that they're just kind of letting him work his way back in slowly because uh, they don't want the, the strain or whatever it is to uh, have any issues? Plus the fact that you've had good goaltending from the other two. Yeah, I mean, in a way, it's become a nice scenario. Obviously, no one wanted this to be the case, but the fact that you know, you've only got two games on the schedule this week for the Leafs, tomorrow and Saturday, uh, that you've only allowed four goals in the three games you played, and, and you've liked what you've seen from Hilda and Stolars. And, and just, you know, I think, big picture, how important Joseph Wall still is to this team. You know, this gives them an ability to, I think, exercise a little more caution to, to do what they think is smart, to make sure that he gets back to 100% before, you know, they're putting him back out there. And you know, my sense is they're, they're going to know here in the next couple of days exactly what kind of timeline they're dealing with. But, you know, it doesn't seem like something that's that should be long term. I, I do expect to see them back playing in the relatively near future. And, you know, as for, you know, what's going on now, I just think that they are exercising caution and, and you know, not wanting to overwork him as, as he gets back on the ice. And then, you know, we'll probably see him progress here uh, with, with a little bit more action in the skates and get to a point where he can play again. But, I think the fact the other goalies have played so well in his absence has made it uh, taken some of the sting out anyway. CJ, do you not find, like, I know you don't wish injury upon anyone and you never try to really break it down, but don't you find it bizarre how his past history and he signs the contract and even the GM came out and oppressor and said, this kid has got to find a way to stay healthy and that's how his year starts? Like, it's, it's crazy for Wool. It, it is crazy, and look, he's relatively young. Uh, he's extremely fit. Like, this isn't an issue where the Leafs have any concerns about, you know, his, his off-ice habits or anything like that. I, I think, you know, it's more about finding different ways to to, to keep up that fitness, to, to, you know, make sure he's doing the right things uh, when, you know, between starts and things to make sure that he's looking after his body. And, you know, they put a lot of work in the summer with, you know, getting him outside opinions and trying to get him to a spot where this, this you know, doesn't become the storyline of his career. I mean, it's still early days for him and I, and I do think there's an ability for him to move beyond this but you know it's, it's got to be incredibly frustrating uh for for him individually to, to get back to this year where you know he, he comes in in there where i think it was pretty clear that the number one job or the 1a job or whatever you want to term it was there for him to take and he you know right out of the box he hasn't been able to, to even skate with his team since the season started yet so um you know that's that's something he's going to have to fight through, and ultimately the only thing he can do is eventually get himself healthy enough to play a whole bunch of games and make us forget about this spell. But, mm-hmm. you know, for a young player who hasn't really ever shouldered a heavy workload, you know, there's certainly some concern there about how frequently he's been injured and, and the different types of injuries. It's not just one area of his body. It's been, uh, you know, a multitude of things that he's dealt with. Well, and that's the reality is he, I'm not sure it's going to change at any point this year. You know, even if he starts 20 games in a row, 30 games in a row, like you you might need to take like a full season of recovery and actually playing before you're going to shake that reputation. And I'm curious, when he returns, is he is he 1A? Is he 1B? Is he the 2? Like how, how where is he going to be on the depth chart when he returns to 100%? Well, I think he's going to have to get eased back in to some degree, and, and it'll probably depend where the other guys are at. I mean, if... If Stolarz has played a handful more games between then and now and, you know, has, has played as well as we've seen in these first couple, I mean, maybe he's coming back kind of in the number two slot. I mean, the, the reality is it's it's a new coach. I think, you know, Craig Berube is approaching this with fresh eyes as much as, you know, we might want to put those labels on what we think the players are going to be. I mean, I certainly think he's coming to this with an open mind. And if Stolarz is, is just rolling and, and the, the team's playing well, I mean, I, I think that he's probably – taken the upper hand but you know as we know between performance between injuries I mean these things tend to go up and down a little bit like stocks throughout the year and so I doubt it will be consistent you know wherever Joseph Wool starts it'll probably go back and forth a little bit as as the season goes along but you know at this point yeah I think you have to view him as a sort of number two option when he is healthy just because of you know the way things have gone with in his absence. I, just the idea of, like, you mentioned the term easing him back in, CJ. I, I, I don't know if he can do that. Like, in that league, I don't know if you just say, hey, you know, take it easy out there tonight. You don't want to. <laughs> like, you got to say to this guy, you got to be ready to go back in there and play a back-to-back against Florida and Boston if needed. Like, that that's what a number one 
is or like a quality goaltender is. You can't go in there and say, ah, we're going to wheel you in there for a night, and then maybe 10 days later we might toss you back in there. I just don't see how that's possible, Jamie. <laughs> is it even possible to ease back into the position? I, I, I mean, it depends on, you know, yes, you can – handpick starts you can make sure that you know maybe it's a, a night where it's a home start against a team that's lesser that type of stuff but ultimately like i'm i'm with Hayes. like i i you got to have a stretch here where people we're not thinking about it. how many times last year samsonov went through waivers there was a you know a, a reset all of that stuff and we came back i kept asking you guys because i was fascinated at what point do we forget that Samsonov went through that tough stretch. It's going to be the same thing with Joseph Wall. If he doesn't come back soon and just get into a groove, it's going to be like, geez, this guy, you know, we remember game seven. We remember game one. There's going to be too many, like, we remembers. Instead of going, geez, do you, do you remember that happened two years ago? Like, he needs to develop some consistency here in being available. That's the biggest word, mm -hmm. available for yes. your team to play, right? Well, we, and we should remember game six, too, though. I mean, he played so well that night to help them get to the game seven. I mean, that's 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 where all this cuts both ways. Is he's, he's done some pretty good things in the net, too, when he's been healthy. Well, and that's why they signed him, right? They thought, yeah. well, let's jump out in front of this, get him on a great deal. We're going to keep him healthy. He's committed to that. We're committed to that. He's going to play really well, and it's going to be a value contract. And, you know, the, the first impression of that new extension is he's heard, and they've already played the three games – Right, we've been through the seven days. He could return tomorrow night. It doesn't sound like he's even close. So no, I mean, I don't think he's way off, but certainly we're not talking about tomorrow night, or I wouldn't even think Saturday either for him. Right, exactly. So we're talking at least the first couple of weeks where he's going to be out, and you know, we'll we'll see. And they're going to need him at some point. Like it's right. not fair to Stallards to just throw him into a situation where it's like you got to play every single night. You know, that's not what he's signed up for either, and that's not what he's been prepared for. And he may be relishing that opportunity, and through two starts, he's looked really good, really, really comfortable, um, which has alleviated any pressure around the team in terms of what's happening with the goaltending. But at some point, like every goalie, Stoltz is going to have an off game or a yes. bad stretch. Like, that's going to happen, and that's where you, you've committed to this tandem where you're, you're buying these guys at low prices. Like, Shesterkin's looking for big money. They're paying their goalies, like, what, $5 million? You know, not even total. Yeah, yeah, total. And the and the plan is when that guy slows down, you get hot. When that guy slows down, you get hot. Like you, you got to pick your spots, and it's like playing the right card at the right time, CJ. And if one of the cards isn't available to you, at some point you're probably going to get burned. Yeah, or, and we're probably going to see four guys. I mean, we've already seen Hildeby, Matt Murray won his, his debut with the Marlies this season over the weekend. It might be a wild year in the Leafs' crease. I mean, I think yeah. there's. We, we, we were sort of preparing for that. I didn't think it would start right from day one of the season. I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't preparing <laughs> for that, CJ. Oh, no, I got to tell you, you're going to see four goalies at least play for the Leafs this year. I mean, it just I, know, I, I just uh, like to say it again. I wasn't prepared for that. I thought this year of all the nonsense we've talked about with goalies over the last six years, I thought this year was going to be that's one and that's two and they're going to share the net and all will be good. But no. Here we are again, no dice. circus act. No dice. Anyway, all right, stole our time presuming starts tomorrow night, and then, like you said, they don't play again until Saturday. They've been home. This is actually a big couple of weeks for Barubi and company because uh, once they hit the road, you know, it's it's go time at that point. But 2-1 and one start, pretty good start. Big game tomorrow night. We look forward to it. Thank you, CJ. We'll do it again soon. All right, guys. Have a great show. Chris Johnston, our TSN Hockey Insider. Calling a shot, you're going to see four goaltenders, if not more, play for yeah, the Maple Leafs I, I this mean, year. I mean, honestly, I still am in the camp that there should be three goalies allowed on the roster. The third one should not count against the cap because for, I, I'd have to go back. Two years ago, I think there was 119 goalies that played in the league. I'm not sure how many played in the league last year. I can check in the next break. But I guarantee you it wasn't, you know, 50. 30, 32 times two. It yeah. was, you know, there was probably a hundred goalies that played in the league last year or close to it. That that's three per team. There were other teams that had five and there were, there were a handful of teams that had two. I believe Winnipeg just had, you know, Hellebuck and Larry Brassois. Yep. I'm you know, looking I think at it right Edmund, here. Yep, Edmondson had three because you had Pickard slide in there, right? Well, yeah, you're looking at it right now. I mean, it's there. There's rare that guys had two. Everybody else had three or more. Right. Well, and that's so, that's why again you look at the Shesterkin stuff and you see Derek Lalonde, the head coach of the Red Wings, last night 
they that's you know smart agent that's why he turned down 88 million he's pretty damn good that guy he's a good i mean yeah and the what the thing i like about it too he's playing smart like he's just agent. like <laughs> smart agent smart <laughs> unnecessary comment from a head coach <laughs> smart well, was he trying, what point though. was he trying to prove that he's he while well, he stole the well, game well they beat the him year. 4-1 last night i think it was the rangers yeah. beat him and like Shesterkin obviously played well he did like if you look at the numbers they he made some yeah like he the Saves expected above goals expected. And yes, yes. Okay. It was, he was good. Put it that way. Numbers oh, are for losers. Stat. Losers Stats are turning for into a stat show. Listen, I, I, Nerds you know what? Are losers. I, what I like to do is I tie them to what I watched. That's the thing. You know, you I can't watch every game, so you mm-hmm. go back and you watch some. Like, sure. Uh, you know, Colorado. I, I was. It was just interesting for me Ooh, to watch man, to see what they, the hell was going on there. They, dude, they the Islanders ugly. laid a beating on them, right? Yes. But he, watch the goal. There was one. I think Paul Mary's goal is insane. Well, I don't know what Georgie Five was doing. He was. He just skated <laughs> out and started poke checking. I, I. It was. I. I Guys, jumped. is it too early for them to make a phone call on a goalie? Like, I don't it's think so. It's not only the goalie, though, man, defensively. They, yeah, like, they've been no good. Taves they, didn't play last night. We have the Kel McCarr audio. Like, this is Kel McCarr, I think, most people would say best defenseman in the world, right? I yeah, think that's I pretty clear so. cut. Yeah. Here's what he had to say about his own evaluation on his own game last night. Three of whatever, three of their whatever six goals, four of their six goals, directly my fault, so... That's just uh, how it goes. Some really stupid, childish mistakes, and um, those things that you got to learn from. But I got to be better for the guys, and I think a lot of that one's on me. I mean, I'm hard on myself, but at the end of the day, I got to be better for these guys. It's, a, it's definitely a lot closer game if I don't play tonight. So <laughs> it's a closer game if I don't play tonight. Dude owns it. What a owned comment! It. I love that. Well, oh, would you rather that or him? Just a cliche. Well. If we uh, get F1 in a better spot. We well, Aaron Rodgers last night blamed Mike Williams, right, for the interception. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. It was that guy. Yeah, but it was he, he underthrew it, didn't he? Yes, like, was he, he underthrew short it. short on the play? He yeah, absolutely. Dude, dude, I still think that thing goes into a ditch. You're, like you're seeing. 100%. With these sports, <laughs> I think you're seeing with these sports His? teams. Yeah. <laughs> excuse me. When you got an owner and you can tell old Woody Johnson, <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> he, he's just a fanboy, and yeah. he gave Aaron Rodgers the key. Like he could tell, he probably met him somewhere, and it's just he in, he's in love with the guy, and he just he's continued to say to him, "What do you need to make this work?" Yeah. and he's yeah. going to keep buying into it, and it's still going to go off the road and into a ditch, and he's going to look like a moron. Hundred percent. And Rodgers will just leave and say Woody's yeah. an idiot, and he'll and throw Woody's going to have his tail bus. between wow. his legs, and yes. he's going to be standing like the pick yeah. I sent of the guy in the grocery store. You That's know right. who I love? Bill Belichick <laughs> has just been sitting there, <laughs> the guy in the grocery store. <laughs> That's what That's, Woody Johnson's going to be when Rodgers leaves. He will. You're right. We will have to doctor that picture up so it could actually make impossible it impossible to make it impossible for TV. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right, Belichick's carving him up during the Belichick Manning cast last night. Belichick just sits there on the Manning cast. It just fires just start. It's Woody hilarious. Johnson. I well, love why wouldn't, it, Like Jerry and Dallas Hayes, why wouldn't he just step back and say, I'm 82. I can drink brown liquor and still fly my chopper into the practice. I'm going to bring in Bill Belichick to run football operations. Why not? Because he then he has to step aside. That's dude. That's you're why he 82 won't, years he old won't and he's a maniac, dude. The yeah. guy's doing interviews after games. He's calling into radio stations. This guy can't. He will he can't not stop. Himself. He can't help he can't himself. Help. He is intoxicated by the limelight. It's not and the Cowboys and Jerry Jones. But yes, he looks he, he, he looks be. and sounds like he's just up there doing God knows what. And it's... He, he might be, but you know what? It's his team, and I guarantee you, this guy will run it until he dies. Yes. This is what's keeping him alive. Like He, he loves it. He I loves blame it. his right-hand man. You always got to have a right-hand it's man. His, that's son. Says, that's the his son has got to grab him by the arm and say, that's enough. He's and not you're... doing that because guess what happens? Stevie yeah. boy gets cut out of the will, exactly. fired immediately. He's got, he knows what's coming. He's going to own the team afterwards. Yeah. And like, guaranteed Jerry Jones, like would be the type of guy who would cut him out of the will. Yes. If he crossed him, he'd piss him off. That would be it. So yes. and, and it'll he, be in the will that Steven Jones has to be the GM of the team. Like a yeah. Jones has got to run the team for, yeah. you know, in perpetuity. Can never change. Put your damn act together. Exactly. That's insane. <laughs> exactly. Man. Anyway, you guys want to hear the first clue of Al's brother? It's a short week, yes. right? We only have three of these clues. All right. Uh, Al's brother last week was at Ted Reeve Arena. Beautiful rink. 
up in the Upper Beaches area. Let's hear from uh, Al's brother's first clue of the week. All right, Lee fans, you tracked me down quickly last week, and I just don't see it happening again this week. We're giving away another pair of tickets, and this time it's to Maple Leafs and Lightning on Monday, October 21st. Your first clue for this week, this is one of many places that can be accessed by the Underground Path. All right, that is a good first clue because – that goes all the way up to Bloor. I mean, you're you're down at the lake. You're you're you know kind of midtown Toronto. Dude, I already know. It. You want me to guess it? Is that Dundas Square? I know no, it. If he's at, that if Dundas he's at Scotiabank, no. like we're we're firing him. Like it can't be Scotiabank. You're right. That would be too easy. Right. But but the pass yeah. system goes everywhere, man. It, th- th- this guy, he could be anywhere. There's no way you can know from that clue where Al's brother is. Uh, tune in tomorrow for another clue. And the first caller through this Friday with the correct location will win a pair of tickets. Again, to see the Leafs play the Lightning next Monday night. What a game that'll be. Yeah. Giving away good tickets, too, man. Opening night, now Leafs Lightning. Well, the Lightning are finally playing their second game here tonight. I, I, well, because of the hurricane, right? Like, it's yeah. they, they had games postponed. And even, like, yeah. Washington's only played once, I think. I know, they have. Ovi's yeah. playing against Vegas. He's on the other wing, I thought I read today. That they've they've moved him around a little bit. So, <laughs> what's the purpose why. of that? I How did that get this side? That's too many beers and napkins at a bar, yeah. like drawing up. We have it's way too much insane. time on our hands, and we're well, going to change. It's like, it up. hey, we're going to put you on the right wing instead of the left. I mean, yeah. I, it was a right shot. How could? You know, how could that go wrong? But I well, there was I, a big thing a couple of years ago, like about what position. All star voting. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so he was voted on the wrong side. Well, that's but that's the people voting. They need to know better. And it's laid out going, Ovechkin is a left winger. So if you vote him on the right side, you're an idiot. That's basically what they had to lay out with the votes. Sure. So, that's, right. Well, like know. Jersey's playing tonight. They've played five games already. Yeah. Carolina's played one. once. They're playing yeah. in Carolina. They've already got five. They, they're four and one exactly. Like, what a start. You bank points. You get points tonight. You can just possibly cruise through the rest of the month. And, and you know what? I wanted to once maybe in the next segment or whatever – the fight in Buffalo, I liked it. I liked the fight in Buffalo. You liked Darlene and practice. Krebs going at it in practice? Yes, I did. Okay. Yeah, Jamie, because we saw that once a week. That's why. Well, yes. It kind of was a greasy Chaser hit, though, from Darlene, didn't you think? Yeah, but apparently Krebs got his stick up in the previous drill. Okay. So that's what it was. It was a little retaliate retaliatory action. Yes, yeah, once a week in our I like day. it, too. I like but it. Play, doing a game. Like well, doing you, a game. you're right. Do it in a game. I agree. But, yeah, Chaser punched me in the head in practice because he didn't like the – I kicked a rebound. Bag in skate. <laughs> in, a ba- in a bag skate, yes. But this is – I. you know what? I don't think of Darlene as a guy that throws punches ever. Well, he kept his glove on because they're two like, – apparently they're buddies and it just boiled over. But we – I've seen fights in practice so many times. Yeah. Like, it, it's rare nowadays – but it speaks to like those guys are practicing hard. They're feeling it. You know, they they they're up against it. What are they? One and three. Yep. So they they've they got to win better. the other night. Yeah. So okay. You know, I, I had a I kind of front like... row seat to Stu Grimson and Rico Ciccone in practice. Oh, <laughs> wow. It Jacob. was outrageous. I was as soon as they dropped the gloves, I'm like, my buddies would love to be at this practice right now. <laughs> Rick Sison. We used to call him and oh, Stu yeah. Cribs. Those are monsters too, man. Monsters. Like, Enrico Ciccone was the dirty one of the dirtiest <laughs> and a great guy. I love Rick Sison. Yeah. Yeah. Man, Rick was he? <laughs> he <laughs> That's what we called him, Rick Sison. <laughs> Rick Sison. <laughs> Enrico Ciccone. Yes, he was, he a was beauty. so dirty, man, and tough. I love Rick Sison. Everybody yeah. needs a Rick Sison in their lineup. <laughs> okay. That's a that's gonna be a that might be a bit. Who's the next Rick Sison? Where is I he from? It. He's a oh, politician he's Trump, is he? now. What? what is he? Dude, he's a politician. Rick Sison? Rick Sison. I can't say it. I was Enrico Ciccone is a Dude, Canadian. You got a good, no, no. You you Googled the wrong guy. Okay, Rick let me Sison. let me finish. Let me finish what it says. No, no, Here, okay? he would be. For sure. He he was born April 10th, 1970. That's the wheelhouse, the right? That's him. That's him. From, is Quebec a Canadian then. politician and former professional ice hockey defenseman who played in the National Hockey League. 
He currently represents Marquette as a member of the Quebec Liberal Party. Oh, so this guy wants tough. them to, to leave the country? Rick yeah. Sison is trying to get Quebec to cut ties with the country. Well, that's Rick Sison. I can imagine Rick Sison bullying somebody in a boardroom. Yeah. Just showing <laughs> fight clips. He used I, to be exactly. a player agent. I guess he did some French broadcast stuff for the That's Sens where I saw him. That's where I remember him, too. Yeah, I saw way. him at the Bell Center. I was like, Rick Sison, you're on TV. <laughs> <laughs> now he's a politician. Now he's a politician. Yeah. Wild oh stuff, God. man. He's a, he's a beauty. I went to the high lie with him when he was playing in Tampa. I had a buddy, and my buddy brought him along. And we went, do you know what the, the high lie is with the scoops, the, that, that sport where they – it's like a giant racquetball game. You ever heard of that? The high ally? Yeah, isn't it like really dangerous? It's the most rigged sport you've ever seen in your life. Okay. Like you'd be betting on red number seven, and he's a tall, skinny guy, and then all of a sudden red number seven comes out, and he's a short, fat guy. And I'm like, I just put a bet on that guy, and they changed jerseys. It was in, It's insane. And Rick Sison started yelling at Look the at guys. Look at Rick Sison. Like, this guy, that's <laughs> that guy looking like He's trying to bite him. That looks like you. That's Stu. That's Stu Grimson. That's Stu oh Grimson and Rick Sison fighting in real life. And they were teammates. <laughs> and, and then they fought in practice. Wow, wild stuff. All right. Yeah. Uh, confirm beauty. the nice still to come. And Best Bets brought to you by FanDuel. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. I can neither confirm or deny that, uh, that this is in fact a segment. Austin trades Andrew Raycroft to Toronto in exchange for the rights to Tuka Rask. It's been my honor and a privilege to serve as the general manager of the Toronto Maple Leafs Hockey Club. It's time for Confirm or Deny. Do you regret uh, giving all those gentlemen the no trades or no movement clauses? I I, I can neither confirm or deny that. I can't confirm or deny. All right, Confirm or Deny, brought to you by Summit Ford and South Lake Ford Lincoln. Ford employee pricing is back, and you pay what Ford employees pay on most new 2024 Ford vehicles. Limited time only. Visit summitford.com or southlakeford.com today. All right, statements are made. We confirm or we deny them. Very simple stuff. First one, confirm or deny. Oliver ekman Larson has been the Leafs' best player through three games. Best player. Um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to confirm that. If you just look at consistency and just noticeable. and If you're just going to say, like, Present and noticeable as as in quality, yeah. yeah, he's been good. I'll confirm it. He's been really good. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you, but I also want to. I think Anthony Stolarz has only played two. I think he's been really there's good. That, like, then there's your answer. But 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 he's you said player. Like well, I, don't, I mean, you, consider, it, you can okay, include Stolarz. So no, I'm going to deny I'm going because I think Stolarz has been really good. Like yes. he gets put in a really tough spot opening night. And then, you know, played well the other night. Like, to me, I'm going to go Stolars, but that's no re- no disrespect to OEL. I agree. Um, I'm actually going to deny it. I'm going to say Chris Tanev, I think, has actually oh, yeah. been maybe Very their best good. player. I think all three of these guys, these new guys, have had an immediate impact. Um, I think Matthews has been really good. Willie was better the other night. Willie wasn't great the first couple of games. I think Nyes has looked good. Like, I think there's been a number of different guys you could look to and say, that, that guy's played well. What, what has stood out with, with Ekman Larson is, and we talked about it, when he got to Florida, he, he became physical again. Like he had lost that in Vancouver. I'm not sure he had that much in Arizona. A little bit of an edge. You're a big boy. You've been in the league for a long time. Now you're a cup winner. Act like it. And I think he's been physical. He's been in the mix. Offensively, he's had some really good opportunities. And it looks like they're going to stick with him on PP1, which I think has to happen. Like you got to you so. got to switch something up, and if you're not going to move one of the four forwards around, and they've had knives in there because you know Tavares was sick, and then Willie wasn't there today, the four forwards are going to stay. Take Riley off and and put Ekman Larson in there, and uh, I I've, I've been very impressed though. I think he's played really really well. Confirm or deny the Edmonton Oilers should be concerned with their start this season. I am going to I am going to confirm it. Not because of the fact that I'm overly concerned about how it's going to play out. It's just, it's happened since training camp. The coach hasn't liked it since training camp. They did the same thing last year. And if you want to keep shining up a turd and saying, oh, don't worry about it, then just keep doing that if you want. But I would say 
the coach is probably concerned about what he's seeing. If he sees another stink bomb tonight. They got Philly tonight, right? Yeah, yeah. Philly tonight. And Philly's one of those teams where it's like handle business. You might win three to one. Younger team, blah, blah, blah. It could also turn into a 5-1 loss, as we've seen. I'm so. How could you not be concerned about it? I they confirm too. Three. I mean, you, all you yeah, can do is play, play the games, three, and they're, they're yes. all in three, and they look awful. Like they've looked yeah. horrible through. To three say games. there's no concern whatsoever about what you've seen throughout training camp and the first three, it's impossible because it hasn't looked good at all. Yeah, I'll confirm it, but I'm. You know, I I think it's too early to tell. You're three <laughs> Don't deny right. it then. No, because it, <laughs> deny it if you, if there's if it's too early then you're not concerned. I I I've told you guys my reasoning. If McDavid was flying and Drysaddle was flying, yes. and Bouchard actually looked like he was on this planet. He's had some issues like, fumbling you know, the puck like, around. But, yeah, so like if their top players were playing it you know, well and it just was like not happening, then I would be concerned. But I am still I have to confirm it. Because 0 and 3 is 0 and 3, regardless of how you re- arrive at that. Bingo. So, you know, that's, okay. that's the way I'll go. All right. Last week we were talking about McDavid winning the heart, Matthews winning the rocket. This is a bit of a different variation on that. Again, it's only a week. So you see Kucherov opening night, four points with a hat trick. Yep. Look pretty good. Confirm or deny Connor McDavid will win the Art Ross, and Austin Matthews will win the rocket Richard. 100% confirm. It's not Confirming even close. on both. Okay. Yes. I don't even think it'll be close. No. These guys are freaks, and like you, you can't even bring in anything that would affect the result of w- both of these guys not doing it. I, How I much mean, you want to bet that they they both don't they they both do it? I, I might deny this. I I think one of them, you know, I don't know who, but one of them might not have a banner season. You know, McDavid's been invisible, and Matthews has been he's had chances. What eight shots? He's had a couple posts and that. I, I, you know, what if he gets 55, but somebody has a career year? Passing mm-hmm. has gets 60. Yeah. Like, you just don't know. Like, I I, I still want hey, to confirm you want it, it because I do believe, but I'm not taking your bet. No, I don't. Taking. I don't. I mean, it's it's been a week. Yeah, exactly. And three games in to both yeah, of these Yeah, like guys. McDavid's got a one point, so he's, you know, he's well behind a lot of the pace cars. And there's guys at the top who've been putting up good numbers that will for the rest of the year, more than likely. Like, if, if Panarin's healthy, if Kucherov's healthy – you know, McKinnon's going to get points. Like, we know who's going to be up there if they're all healthy and they play the whole year. But McDavid is going to put together a run at some point that is just going to be stupid. He does it every year. I think they both will. Like, like last they're... year, yeah. And dry settle the same thing. That's probably a better question is where dry settles at now that the contract is done. I don't, I don't know. Like, is there something to say about where his mentality is at right now? make it even more difficult to get up for the season that not playing for a contract anymore. It's locked in. He knows where he is. I don't know. That can spark both ways. Some, some players love that. Some players don't. Um, But you know, again, like I said, Matthews, when he ripped home 60, a couple of years ago, didn't score in his first three games. And he had one goal in his first six and he went on to score 60. Like, you know, the way Matthews works, once he gets hot and gets going, you just know he's going to score a ton of goals in a short period of time, I think the better question might be is, like, at what point do these guys take the lead? Like, if you presume McDavid wins the Art Ross, Matthews wins the Rocket, Matthews was the pace car all year. McDavid wasn't because he had a slow start. Like, 12, right. 15 games into the year, he wasn't leading the league in points. No, he was, like, 76th in scoring. Right. Remember, he, he had, like, he went from, like, 150th in scoring down to like 76th. And then within like a month, he was like top 10. Top and you're 10. like, okay, this guy's now he's back on it. Type yes. Of thing. So, um, but I'm still going to, I'm going to confirm that they're still going to, it's too early in the year for me yeah. to, to, to move off those two uh, confirm and deny the New York jets will make the playoffs. I'm Ooh. totally denying this. I don't like their team at all. I think, uh, they're two and four, and yeah, great. You picked up Devonte Adams. I love how Adams' hamstring now is a hundred percent. He's playing he's, Sunday. Of course he is. Not even on the injury report. Like not even on, this guy. <laughs> pulls Kaiser shoe. Sose. That's what he is. Yes. Like it was a complete shoot deployment, and now he's in New York, and they're two and four. Well, and... how can you argue with the guy? He got what he wanted. These guys just get what they want. Yeah, it's he like, did. Oh, I hurt myself. Trade me. Well, I hate it here, what? and they yep. get traded. He sure did. Who? He's James Harden. Then that's what it is. Yeah. That's right. James Harden and Ben Simmons. 
Ben Simmons was talking recently about how people have forgotten he's a really good basketball player. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that he said? Yeah, no uh, he, uh, it was something like that, right, Dude, Doogie? Like no way that he could be on record with that comment. That was precisely like it wasn't verbatim. But uh, if, uh, if I had a guest, because his name has not come up on our show since the summer and since I started in September, I would guess that he's not playing basketball this year. That's what I would have guessed. I would put that down as a guarantee he'll play less than forty-one games. Like I'll say sure. less than thirty. Yeah, that's a safe bet. You'd have to give me odds to take that. Like, that's minus money that he plays less than 30 games. Wow. Ben Simmons. Like, the I NBA is just a different beast, guy. man. Joel Embiid <laughs> was doing an interview <laughs> over the weekend, and he said, yeah, if I had to guess, I'll probably never play a back-to-back again in my career. Oh, my God. Like, he's just calling his shot. He signed a monster extension over the offseason. And he's just basically telling Nick Nurse, "I'm not, I'm, I'm not playing back to back anymore." That's so concerning. Uh, that's so I, bad I for hate, the league. I hate that's that's what is concerning. Adam Silver has a, a massive, massive issue on his problem. hands when you yeah. have players that are ticket sellers, ticket drivers, buzz drivers, rating drivers. Like Embiid's one of the well, faces of the NBA. He, 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 you know what you do, guys? You make it so there's no back-to-back games anymore. Well, that's what they they would love to be able to do that, but they're going to have to – I don't think you can play 82 games and have that schedule. I understand. I get it. But it's just – that's what you're going to be dealing with. You you try and manipulate the schedule that these guys never play back-to-back. Like, yeah, the Nuggets coach came out yesterday and was like, these guys are so soft. I can't, I can't even train yeah. them hard in practice to run them up and down the floor. It's crazy. They're not in shape. Yeah, it's crazy. Like Embiid just saying, if I had to guess, I'll just never play. So let's say back to back, last week of the season, you know, you're you're a win, you're you're just out of the playoffs. You're just not going to play. You're making yeah. like sixty million dollars. You're you're just you're not going to play. I mean, I, I don't know. Yeah. I just that that would be the kind of thing where if you're Adam Silver, you're like, can you not say that on the record, please? Exactly. Yeah. Like, and even basketball if, you know, is different, Hayes, but I always remember Paul Coffey saying, you guys are just making too much of this. What are you going to play, like 12 minutes tonight? You're going to play 13? 13 minutes and you're talking about anything but tired or back-to-back? Give me a break. Yeah, it's crazy. Ridiculous. Um, yeah. All right, confirm and deny. Brought to you by Summit Ford and South Lake Ford Lincoln. Ford employee pricing is back. You pay what Ford employees pay on most new 2024 Ford vehicles. Limited time only. Visit SummitFord.com or South Lake Ford. Dot com today. Maybe we roll a little confirm or deny over to tomorrow. I got a few more in the bank. I think we might do a little role play level of concern tomorrow. I like that idea. Why don't idea. we do it? Why don't yeah. we take a break? Let's out. hit a couple more before right, we the might have a couple over. more after dark. We got our best bets still to come as well. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. All right, today's best bets powered by FanDuel. Make your picks and assemble a same game parlay in seconds on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. One of these games, and I think it will be tonight, if not definitely by the weekend, the Oilers are going to pop. They're going to pop offensively, and the big boys are going to be the ones to do it. And I'm going to jump on it tonight with a pretty decent plus parlay. Connor McDavid, anytime goal scorer tonight. Leon Dreisaitl, two-plus points tonight. Evan Bouchard, three-plus shots on goal tonight. That's the trifecta right there, right? Like they're, Those are the three offensive engines. You throw Hyman in there, Nugent Hopkins at home can supply some offense. But especially that power play, like it runs through those two and or those three. I think it gets cooking tonight, and that's paying plus 693. Today's best bets powered by FanDuel. Please play responsibly. 19 plus physically located in Ontario. All right. There you go. And we got game two of the ALCS tonight. Yankees Cleveland. Dude, the Mets are doing something weird. I don't know if I like it. It's not weird. It's honoring the past. They're bringing out guys from like 86 and Mm -hmm. and then the next game it's different guys and i would just keep it low-key and i don't want any i don't want any kind of negative juju man i i don't know (laughs) i i just find it weird i just like just whoever you had the last game of the season that you had to win like just have that guy throw out the first pitch it's a big moment i guess right and uh I mean, I can't believe the Mets are in this spot. Remember how bad they were last year and the way they started Dude, this year? No one, there, for some reason, the Mets, like, they have a following. So many Mets tweets throughout the season where it was this. This is officially rock bottom for yeah. me as a Mets. Like, I saw Hate that. Them. All July. I don't know what time of the summer, but like this is so Mets. I hate the Mets. This is like rock bottom for me. And now 
They're one one with the Dodgers. It's amazing. Like it's amazing. Like the Yankees are playing tonight. The Mets will be playing tomorrow, and yeah. the next three, you know, or the next two after that. Kind of bugs me. I I always think to myself, how come it can't be the Jays? How come the Jays can't be Kansas City? How come they can't be Cleveland? Can't how come it, they man. can't right. be Dodgers? Can't how come they it. can't be the Mets? Can't do They're it. They're not anything right now. Well, and Teoscar Hernandez doing what he's doing as well. Oh, like yeah, what he kind had of to go. like had to trade him for a bullpen arm that the next year you like designate for assignment? Crazy, just Crazy. an outrageous <laughs> run from that yeah. front office. Still tied to the, it's still tied. To it's the still Blue Jays. bothering people. Yeah. Like again, I was with my like brother in laws. Yeah, we're talking more about the Jays. So, like, what is happening with this? Like, people are so angry. Yeah. So angry with this front office and with this team. It's crazy. Bullpen arm. Yep. And yet here we are. <laughs> All right, good stuff. Thanks to everyone behind the scenes for helping out. We appreciate it. Everyone for tuning in today, TV, radio, podcast, web, we appreciate that. We're out of here. Enjoy your evenings. Enjoy the games tonight. We're back tomorrow at? Tonight in Columbus, Blue Jackets, Panthers. Have a great game. Well, uh, Great job by everybody. Well done. Yeah. 4 yeah. p.m. Taking a Johnny Goudreau. We'll chat then.